All of us here in Canoga Falls would like to send special greetings to our sister city of Bellbird. Few figures in American entertainment have earned the same admiration as the iconic Carol Burnett. A trailblazer in comedy and a recipient of numerous awards, she captivated audiences with her talent and infectious warmth. Throughout her successful career, Carol was also called some stunning places home, including a sprawling 8-acre estate in New Mexico and a sleek condo in Los Angeles. Carol Burnett Burnett started on TV in the early 1950s, a stepping stone that paved the way for her eventual rise to stardom. Her first significant TV appearance was on the Winchell Mahoney Show children's TV program. This led to co-starring with Buddy Hackett in the sitcom Stanley in 1956, but it was her regular appearances on the Gary Moore Show starting in 1959 that truly showcased her talents to a wider audience. The pivotal point in her career no doubt came with The Carol Burnett Show, a groundbreaking comedy variety series. Premiering in 1967, the show spanned 11 seasons, entertaining audiences with its unique blend of humorous sketches and musical performances. Not to mention, Burnett's expressive face and impeccable comedic timing were key to the show's success. Despite the show's end in 1978, she returned to TV with Carol and Company in 1990 and a revamped version of The Carol Burnett Show in 1991. Recently, in a stylish celebration marking her 90th birthday last April, Burnett was honored with an NBC TV special called Carol Burnett, 90 Years of Laughter and Love. Aside from Carol's storied career, her choice in properties also offers a glimpse into her personal life and taste. In the heart of Santa Fe, New Mexico, sits a property as vibrant and eclectic as Burnett herself. Priced at $5.2 million, this estate spans over eight acres on the coveted Circle Drive. The centerpiece is a sprawling 7,500 square foot main house, boasting three bedrooms built in a Pueblo Revival style. Embracing the essence of Santa Fe, this residence includes not just the main house, but also a two bedroom gatehouse and a casita. Outside, the grounds feature a stunning swimming pool with a charming cabana. This gated oasis is set up with lush landscaping, providing the perfect setting for entertainment and relaxation. Then the interior shows amazing design elements, plaster walls, flagstone and hardwood floors, beamed ceilings, circular columns, and stained glass windows. The kitchen space is full of character and boasts custom cabinets, a unique key-shaped island, a copper sink, and a delightful breakfast nook. There's even a game room that features a pool table, a large TV, and a fireplace. Carol's one-time master suite offers dual bathrooms, walk-in closets, and a spacious layout accentuated by a fireplace, as well as a rooftop deck where you'll find stunning mountain views. Listing agent said about the place, it's a comfortable and gracious house. It is really conceived as a multi-generational family retreat. While that place is no doubt beautiful, it isn't Carol's only property. Nestled within the urban landscape of Los Angeles, you'll find a completely different type of home. Burnett's modern condominium, which is significantly more compact in its size. Situated in the Wilshire Condominium Building in Westwood, this three-bedroom unit was last sold for $3.7 million. Spanning 2,800 square feet, this condo underwent a significant renovation in 2011, where they blended a fusion of modern amenities and sophistication. Featuring a private elevator as well as two balconies, this home offers the best in urban living. Now, one of the bedrooms has been transformed into an office space for the working person, but the possibilities are endless. To add, the views of the Santa Monica Mountains are available from every room. As we can see, Carol Burnett's choices in homes exemplify her diverse tastes. Her Santa Fe Haven embodies space and rustic charm, offering a retreat that resonates with the spirit of the Southwest. Meanwhile, her LA condominium, though smaller in scale, is elegant and urban in its own right, reflecting the city life. Well, that wraps up today's Carol Burnett house tour. Before you head out, answer this question for me. If you had to choose, would you prefer to live on a sprawling Santa Fe estate or at a sleek Los Angeles condo and why? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss a video. I'm Kara the Vampire Slayer. Follow me on Instagram to chat. And if you'd like to take a peek into more celeb homes, stay tuned for this look inside the properties of Tim Curry. Bye.
British actor Tim Curry is a man of many talents, best known for his role as Dr. Frankenfurter in both the original musical stage production and feature film version of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Tim has been breaking down barriers from the very beginning of his career while turning himself into an industry trailblazer. Unfortunately, back in 2012, Tim suffered a life-threatening stroke that left him with slurred speech and paralyzed on one side of his face. Nonetheless, Tim has remained optimistic ever since and has dedicated himself towards recovering best he can. Today, he's once again strong enough to share the difficulties he has faced with others. Thankfully for Tim, he's owned a series of stunning residences based out of Los Angeles over the years, which is where he's spent the vast majority of the last decade recuperating. The first home on record that Curry owned in the city of Los Angeles was a gated retro farmhouse in the foothills of the celebrity-endorsed subdivision of the Oaks. Next Next to the Griffith Park Observatory, this home was constructed in 1957 with an exterior full of vintage charm, including diamond-shaped leaded glass windows, as well as a gated driveway and a curved sewn pathway leading to the front door. The interior was then updated with chic, clean, and contemporary sense of style. Inside this 1,891 square foot home, you'll find conventional ceilings and black crown molding. There's also quirky wallpaper eclectic furnishings and a low-hanging chandelier to be found in a living room that also boasts a fireplace. Not far from there is a den with a fireplace of its own, not to mention a wall-mounted TV and a skylight above. When it comes to mealtime, Tim used his well-equipped chef's kitchen with high-end appliances, ceramic floors, and a breakfast nook. Upstairs, each of the two bedrooms boasts its own ensuite, including the master suite, which has the added bonus of a sitting area too. But as nice as the inside is, the loveliest part of this home is stepping through the French doors to discover the extra large patio and lagoon style pool with accompanying spa. There are even stone steps that lead down to a garden, making this Tim's own personal private oasis for a number of years. Then in 2005, Tim listed this property and sold it to actress Christina Ricci for $1.5 million. She would live here for the next decade before selling the home at a slight loss in 2014. As for Tim, after selling that at home, he immediately bought a new one, not far from his first, in the neighborhood of Los Feliz. Having sold one home to film actress Christina Ricci, Tim Curry turned around and bought his next home from TV star and friend David Hyde Pierce. Tim purchased a four bedroom, four bathroom, 3,365 square foot home from the man best known as Niles Crane in 2006 for a reported $2 million. Under Curry's ownership, this 1920s era abode underwent a huge renovation, updating its interior, including the study, den, and breakfast room, while keeping much of the period details and charm for this private home that sits on a gorgeously maintained one third of an acre lot with palm trees and a swimming pool. After suffering his stroke in 2012, this was also the first house that Tim returned to in order to begin the long process of healing. Two years later, however, Tim would sell this property in 2014 for $3.2 million. I guess he must have already been feeling a bit better by that point. But there's one other home Tim owned in Los Feliz that he sold just prior to his health scare. And something tells me that if he had the chance to go back in time and do it all over again, he might make a different decision because this place is exactly the kind of home you'd want to recuperate in. Back in November 2004, Tim Curry bought himself a property with a pretty remarkable pedigree. The home, constructed in 1922 by Los Angeles architect Stiles O. Clements, sits on a 2.2 acre lot and was one of the first homes to ever be built in the neighborhood of Los Feliz. When Tim first discovered this property, he wasn't looking to buy a new home for himself, but a friend of his knew his immense love for gardening, and he believed that this could be the perfect spot for Tim to develop that passion even further. At that time, this home was painted a not so tasteful shade of red and was in desperate need of fixing up. Nonetheless, with all that potential for a gorgeous garden space, Curry put in an offer of over $3.3 million anyway. Soon enough, it was his. Tim rolled up his sleeves and got to work to bring the outside of this place to life. When discussing his passion for gardening, Curry once told the Guardian, the idea is organizing nature not just into pleasing shapes, but also as a kind of spiritual resource. Unfortunately, taming the garden was easier said than done 
both because of its enormous size and the fact it had remained untended for so long. When Tim arrived, the space was full of weeds, skunk nests, and the occasional coyote that would stroll by and look at him as if he was the intruder. With the help of a professional landscaper, Curry removed 40 tons of weeds and unearthed a series of stone paths beneath the dirt. Those pathways were then restored and added to divide the grounds into higher and lower sections. This enhanced the dramatic effect of Tim's garden with its special combo of plants and textures. For instance, the lower section boasted an English garden with silver and lavender mound Artemisia, as well as 150 rose bushes. Elsewhere, Tim crafted a Mediterranean area with potato vines dangling from an old avocado tree. Meanwhile, up in the higher section, he planted cacti and succulents, backed by a black volcanic rock. Above that is a tropical poolside area with pines and camellia bushes. But Curry's favorite spots of all were probably the two patios on either side of the house, each of which came with a bench from which he could watch the sunrise from one and sunset from the other. Situated just below Griffith Park, Tim's longtime home was formerly owned by the likes of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and cinematographer Robert Richardson before Tim moved in. Known locally as the Sailor House, this Spanish-style estate boasts a checkerboard floor that greet guests immediately upon entering. The ceilings are equally nice, thanks to the delicately carved wooden beams that effortlessly draw the eyes upwards. The downstairs great rooms are all awe-inspiring in their own right, boasting well-preserved original details and hand-painted ceilings. There's even a dining room that's perfect for throwing large dinner parties and catered celebrations, while the kitchen has been updated with green custom cabinets, a large center island with a sink, stainless steel appliances, a TV, and doors leading to the outside patio. As for the master bedroom, it boasts large floor-to-ceiling French doors on either side, as well as a Juliet balcony and a secondary larger balcony on the opposite side that overlooks the lush hills. Not far from that bedroom is a second suite that boasts a coffered ceiling plus a more modern ensuite bath. Tim's old home also included a glamorous media room, a game space with a card table, a library, and a guest house. All that being said, for my money, the best spot is the one-of-a-kind Whitestone Amphitheater that you'll find sitting on top of the entire property. Couple that with the ground's endless series of waterfalls, fountains, and koi ponds, and I can't understand why Tim ever wanted to leave. According to records, Tim sold this property in 2011, just one year before he got sick, to actor Robert Pattinson for $6.2 million. Over the next few years, the property would continue to change hands from one famous owner to the next, including Noah Weil and Jim Parsons. But Tim never returned to the home he helped breathe new life into. Where exactly Tim lives these days isn't entirely clear. There's no official record anywhere to be found, but the rumor mill suggests he still owns a home in LA, just with a much smaller garden that still provides the necessary sanctuary he needs to rest, recuperate, and work on his tan. But wherever he's living, it seems Tim's home has revisited that bright shade of red based upon remote interviews he's given over recent months. Until we find out exactly where that might be, we'll bring this latest house tour to a close. Thanks so much for joining me today, and before you head out, consider answering the following question. Would you ever buy a multi-million dollar fixer upper simply because you believed in the potential of its garden? Let me know if you have planting on the mind as much as Tim Curry does in the comments below. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you never miss a drop.